this session one of what I'm calling when life gets tough. Life has its tough times. Now God created Adam and Eve. He put them in a garden with everything that was there for them. There was no stress, no worry, just enjoyment of life. But this didn't last because they disobeyed God. They wanted to decide for themselves between what was good and what was not. The result was they were driven out of the garden and it says that God placed cherubim and a flashing sword at the entrance of the garden so there was no way back. And this is actually a picture of the reality of life. Creation was spoiled by our disobedience and so pain, sickness, stress entered the world. The flaming sword indicates that we can't just go back there. The trouble for us is that somewhere deep down in the recesses of our minds, we tend to have this idea that real life is worry-free, stress-free, pain-free. And so when things go wrong, we feel like we're being cheated. But the reality is, life in this world has sickness, stress, and pain, and grief. Living these is just as much living life as living the good times is. There's a popular saying that when things get tough, the tough get going. <clears throat> well, there's a truth in this. It suggests that we really have to grit our teeth and fight our way through, through the hard times. One of the most difficult times of, is, is dealing with grief. <clears throat> grief is not an emotion that we like to feel because it hurts. When we lose someone who's close to us, it just leaves a big hole. It's right to grieve. It's a very real thing. For some Christians, it's difficult because they've been taught that we are to be victorious. We're to praise God at all times. And so they feel like, well, I can't express grief because that's showing defeat. And so in an effort to look victorious, they push it right down and try to live on top of it. It's very dangerous because the grief down there will start to do damage, begin to affect our whole being and will often lead to depression and anxiety. It's right to grieve. At the same time, for Christians, we do not have to grieve without hope. First Thessalonians 4.13, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest who have no hope. We have the promise of God that someone who's lived their life trusting in Jesus will be with him in a life beyond this life. And that we too, if we live trusting in Jesus, we'll see them again. So we can rejoice for the one who's gone, but we can grieve at the same time for our loss. We also know that God brings comfort in a way that nothing else or no one else can. It's a truth that if we know Jesus in the dark times of grieving, we'll feel a closeness that we won't feel any other time. If we take our grief to God, we learn more about his love. We feel the support, the strength that he gives us. So while experiencing grief, we can also experience the amazing love. Let